So to get started, let's create a resource group to hold our machine learning workspace and all the assets that we'll create. So uh, let's call it um, how about deploy ML model, and then I'll put RG on the end of this for resource group. Uh, region, I'll choose North Central, it's a little closer to me. And then review and create, looks good. Let's just go ahead and create that. And there's our resource group. We'll create our first resource is going to be our machine learning workspace. So we'll just search for Azure Machine. It'll come up on the top of the list. Select. Okay, we want to create a workspace. So create. Um, I'm just going to give it kind of the same name. So deploy ML model um, WS for workspace. I'll put it in the same region, North Central US. There it is. And the rest of this defaults are fine. Uh, so these are automatically created storage accounts, key vault, application insights, um, and the deployment wizard will do that for us. So let's go ahead and create that. It's good. And deployment in progress. So I can see the resources are being created. And then once those are created, I think we'll just go and look at the resource group and see what's over there so that you can see the first thing that you get and yeah resource group there we go so here in the resource group we have then the workspace and the the uh, log analytics key vault storage account application insights so these are all the default things that get created to actually use the workspace we'll launch into the machine learning studio and um, so this start page gives a lot of different things that we might want to do um, and, and this is really the full workspace. So we could develop our own models. You can see on the left-hand navigation, um, you know, we can create notebooks, we can use prompt flow, we can you know, upload data assets. Um, you know, this, we can do a lot of different solutions, but what we really wanna do is just deploy a pre-trained LLM. So if we go to the model catalog and on the right-hand side, we can see like which tasks we want to use and you know, do we want to use things that are created by Azure ML or Hugging Face or Microsoft Research? So there are a lot of choices that we can make here. Um, what I really want to do is um, is do uh, uh, text translation. So there's this translation box here, but um, text translation is what I really want. So let me click on that. And here I have three models. Um, I'm going to choose a T5 small. So it's a fairly small model, um, and it wouldn't cost that much for us to host this. And if it meets our needs, then you know it would work out great. So here we can see the the uh, what this is all about. We've got sample input, output, and we can read about it and reference what training data was used to make it and so on. What we want to do, though, is deploy it. So I'm going to choose real-time endpoint so that I can deploy a an endpoint that can be used by an interactive application. In this wizard, I choose what kind of compute I want to uh, run this on and that would depend on how much data I want to process for this demo I'm just gonna kind of sort this and choose the least expensive compute available So I'll choose this one and I can have multiple instances for load balancing, but I'm just gonna go with one uh, mm -hmm. Since this is you know for test and this all looks good. So let's go ahead and deploy that and the deployment process will deploy the the model um, and then also deploy an endpoint that we'll use to access the model from uh, from an application. So this takes probably about 20 minutes, 15 minutes. So this is, um, it takes a while to deploy these resources, but I'm gonna fast forward and um, take a look at this. And so when I can see when it's done that it's given me some, you know, the deployment's completed, the endpoint deployment is completed. Um, so everything looks really good here. Okay. so. We're just going to kind of skip ahead and let's let's test this. So we'll consume it, and here we can see we've got what the endpoint are, the keys, we have code samples. So they really give you a lot to get started with. Um, and what I'm going to do is just kind of reference the Python code probably, and we'll use um, Postman rather than writing actual you know computer code. But we can use this code for kind of kind of to tell us how the Postman request should be put together. So I'll add a new request. And this is going to be a post. I know that. And let me organize this a little bit so that we can see the documentation as well as the request we're putting together. And we'll 
kind of open this up a little bit and we're going to need authorization. Oh, no, that's not going to be a, not, not a query parameter. The authorization goes in the header. So let's put in an authorization header. And let me find the key. Oh, wait a minute. It's not, not here. It's, it is back in consume. So there's the key, the primary key, secondary key. We'll just grab one of those and put in our, our authorization key uh, as part of a bearer token. That looks good. Uh, our content type is going to be JSON. So let's get that in here too. Oops, and we'll get the, the URL up above. So our post URL is, is here, it's the rest endpoint. That looks good. And then let's see if there's anything else we're missing. So we've got content type authorization. Oh, and they want us. Okay, so we also want to include the, the model name. So we'll make sure that get this all right. So there's our model name, and we'll just kind of copy it and paste from here. And an endpoint can have multiple models deployed. That's the reason they want to see that in the header, so that it uh, directs the request to the right model. Okay, I think we've got all of the preamble. Now let's talk about the body. So. So the body is going to be JSON. So we'll start this with an object. And we can look in the, the left and we see input data is the only key that we need here. It's going to be an array of strings that we want translated. So we'll start the prompt with translating this to German, colon. And I'm just going to put in here, life is wonderful. If you learn to live it. Yeah, that looks good. And then on the left, we can see that the params is an expected parameter. We don't really have any params, so we'll leave an empty object, run that, and we get the German translation of the English that we entered. So that looks good. Um, and that's pretty much it on calling it. And then last, I just want to take a peek and, um, you know, we can go into uh, Postman and get versions of this in curl or C or Kotlin. Uh, maybe Swift if we're going to incorporate this code into an iOS application. Um, and we can kind of pull that from here in addition to what Azure gave us within the, within the console. So that's pretty much it. So just to review what we did, we started with the Azure workspace that we created and you know we could do all kinds of things in here, but what we did is went into the model catalog and found the model that we wanted. Then we created a an endpoint and deployed a model into um, Azure uh, Compute that we provisioned within our own account. And from there, we can just go ahead and consume the model through a post REST API. So I hope that was interesting, or at least that you learned something, and I'll see you next time.